two bed, three bed, four bed, five bed, even larger, what size surface accommodation unit works best? On this video, I'm gonna share my views. I'm Simon, I'm a service accommodation specialist and I've done all different types of sizes of SAs and on this video, I'm gonna share with you some of my views, some of my opinions, some of the hard lessons I've learned and give you some value if you are in the process of getting your first unit or deciding what size of unit to get next. If that sounds good, if you like the content, I always say this, but for me, nobody's as consistent as me with this content, this free rent to rent SAHMO content. If you agree, if you disagree, comment below, tag somebody else that you're rating, okay? Um, I really probably need to start collabing and connecting with other YouTubers. So if you are a YouTuber and you are um, you know, doing content and you like my stuff, reach out, I'd love to collab, it'd be, it'd be amazing. So, first things first, I prefer houses, everybody. You know, I've done videos on this before. For me, houses are better than apartments. And the reason for that is, number one, you've got your own sort of self-contained property. Number two, largely, not always, down south and in London and stuff, it's different, but largely houses are usually freehold. So there's no lease that you need to abide by. Um, the owner owns the freehold and then they give you full access to you know, do what you want within certain other remits that you might agree on. Uh, the third thing is access. So I like just being able to walk in a house. You're not disturbing neighbors. You, know, you don't have to walk through a main building. It's like, where do I put the key safe? It's like, what happens if neighbors in the same apartment keep seeing people come in and out and then they talk to your guests and then you know, they could let the, you know, I've had situations, not personally, but where I've heard of people going uh, with apartments, not doing their due diligence with the lease, neighbors finding out because they're being disrupted, reporting them to the leasehold and then you getting in trouble. So for me, apartments are largely, not always, but largely a no-no. And if you are gonna do them, you need to check the lease, get legal advice, and make sure that you do due diligence, and also try and push for longer term stays. But anyway, now we've decided houses are good, let's go for the sizes. So studios, forget about it, okay? I'm not interested in studios, and I'm not interested in one bed houses. There's not many, to be honest with you. Um, that's another actual benefit of houses. They're typically larger than flats. So studios and one beds, forget about it. The reason why is because you're competing with hotels. And unlike hotels, we need to charge cleaning and this, that, and the other because we're smaller providers. So hotels have the upper edge, you know, they're gonna be a tighter operation. So forget studios, forget one beds, leave that to the hotels. We want two beds, three beds, four beds, five beds, and sometimes greater. Now, for me, two beds are good, okay? They're good, they're solid, but once again, you know, I sometimes find it depends on the location. It depends on the finish. It depends if there's parking. It depends if there's a garden. Because once again, if there's just two of you, you could opt for sharing one hotel room or you could opt for two hotel rooms. So sometimes two beds can be a bit of a struggle, but not if they've got other things going for them. When you move over to three plus, a whole new world awaits you. And the reason is, because of the size and the other benefits, people are usually willing to sacrifice other things, such as parking, such as gardens, such as location, because they, you know, it, it, they can offset the cost of a slightly more travel because they're getting a three or a four or five bed. And the other benefit of this is typically construction teams in your area normally are gonna operate in teams of three or more. So two bed can work if you've got a twin room and a double, but I find that three beds are more flexible. I also love four beds that are in the same zone and five beds can be absolute stonkers. And the reason for that is I find the competition for other SA operators decreases as the amount of bedrooms increases. So that means less people are doing five beds, okay? And then slightly more people are doing four beds and slightly more are doing three beds. Loads of people are doing two beds. So 
the competition is intrinsically less for the larger units. And I think that's partially because people just don't know what they don't know. You know, when you think of SA, you think of two bed apartments, three beds. You don't think of five bed houses, but trust me, they are beasts because people are willing to travel slightly further out. There's often always parking for a five bed. There's often always a garden for a five bed. There's more bathrooms in a five bed and potentially most importantly, you can charge more. So the amount you can charge is disproportionate to the amount of rent. I'm getting all heavy here. What I'm saying is you might have a four bed that's a thousand quid a month and a five bed is 1500. Okay. But you might be able to charge three times more for the five bed than the four bed. So as you can see, the benefit outweighs the additional cost. So five beds are good. As soon as you go over five beds, for me, it gets too much. Now that's not to say that I've not had bigger HMO units that I get big teams in or larger properties, but it is to say that less people are gonna want eight guests than they are four, five, six. So all that happens is you become slightly more specialist. So for me, I personally like three, four and five beds, okay? Um, I think in terms of competitive advantage, you've got the best balance. Let me know what size unit you prefer. Let me know if you disagree. Let me know if you agree. Um, and I actually had the option of doing a two bed this week, but it's round the corner from another two bed that's not working that well. So final top tip is try to experiment with different size units in your area and see which one works best because it's gonna be different depending on where you are based. And if you've got one two bed that's not working, don't get another. Definitely not in the same micro location. Move locations or try your, um, try, try your hand at three or four beds. And uh, I've given so much value, man. Guys, hit the subscribe button, come on. Um, but final top tip is, if in doubt and you've got a two bed that's not working great, do some dummy ads and test out some other size units before you even commit to them. Hope you found this useful. You know what to do and I'll see you in the next one. Introducing Creative Cashflow Plus, the first rent-to-rent -rent app and leading platform dedicated to supporting you on your property journey. Ask the experts anything. Be held accountable so that you can smash your goals. Mastermind with other rent-to-rent -rent specialists. Access our deal clinic to get your deals analyzed by a pro. And unlock hours of videos and podcasts guaranteed to help you take your rent to rent business to the next level get the ongoing support that you deserve join us creative cashflow plus